Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I get a lot of questions on direct messages or email from new starters in film photography that uh, are asking real basic questions but there's problems and mistakes that they're, they're uh, witnessing on their journey in film photography. So I've put together my top tips on starting out in film photography. There's lots more tips you can add to it but these are the core ones uh, that have come from messages from people over the last few months. So I'll put this together. Uh, I mean one of them for example is when they go and develop film there's nothing on their film at all. They look at it and they go oh, it's all blank what's going on? What's happened? The most common uh, issue with that is that the film hasn't loaded inside the camera and it's a common thing that happens it's happened to me it's happened to you it's happened to the queen it's happened to rocky balboa it's happened to everybody so uh, i'm going to run the video let you guys watch it and uh, this is my top 10 tips for people that are starting out in film photography It's a mistake that we all make and sometimes still do. Not so much with more modern cameras, but with the older classic cameras, it's easy for the film to slip off the take-up spool if you haven't loaded it correctly. You get to the point where you're sure you've shot more than 36 frames, but the camera keeps advancing. Alarm bells should start to ring there and then that you haven't shot a single frame as the film wasn't loaded correctly in the first place. A way to tell this is by making sure the rewind crank is turning with every advance from the start. If it is, great, you're on your way. If it's not turning, then you know your film isn't loaded correctly. It is possible, however, for the film to have some slack inside the film cassette, so if the rewind crank isn't turning immediately from the start, it may take a few advances to get taut. However, if you get to four, five, or six advances and that rewind crank still isn't turning, then the film isn't being taken up on the take-up spool inside the camera and you're not taking any photographs. Tiny particles of grit and dust can rest inside your camera from continued use and opening the back to unload and reload films, especially when you're outdoors. It's always good practice to use a rocket blower inside the camera before loading your film. The tiniest piece of dirt or grit can rest in the back of the camera, scratching your film, so it's always good practice to get the rocket blower on the camera before you load your film and start taking your photographs. Another easy mistake to make is not setting your camera to the speed of your film. It's not necessary if you're in manual mode and you're using handheld light meters. Even if you're shooting fully manual, I always find it's good practice to set the camera's ISO to the film you've got inside. Most film cameras have a film reminder. Some have a window showing you the film inside, but older cameras have an insert on the back door. That is for you to tear off the top of the box and slide it into the insert to remind you of what film you're shooting. It's a good habit to get into and I am guilty of not always doing so. However, there are times when I've totally forgotten what film is in which camera, especially if I've left the film in the camera for a few days. In those situations, I'd wish I'd put the reminder on the back door. If you have a rewind crank on your camera, after you have shot all your exposures on a roll of film, instead of rewinding it all the way back into the cassette, rewind it far enough just so the leader is hanging out of the cassette. To do this, as you're rewinding the film, you start to get near the end, and as you do so, you'll hear a snapping noise of the leader coming off of the take-up spool. As you open the back door, your film will be rewound, but your leader is still hanging out. If you're new to developing film yourself, then this tip is quite handy for loading the film onto the reel in daylight. As the leader is already exposed to light when you loaded it into the camera, you're safe to cut the start of the film and then feed the leader onto the developing reel before you put it in your changing bag, giving you a head start. You can then save the film cassette for either a keyring or for reusing if you ever start bulk loading your own film. It is possible, especially if you've just purchased a used film camera, that the camera's light meter is not as accurate as it once was, leading to grossly under or overexposed negatives. The metering system in your camera might not be working because the batteries need replacing, so always check the batteries first. Not every beginner in film photography will have a handheld light meter and will rely on the camera's internal meter. But how do you know if it's working? You could chance the sunny 16 rule and take the camera outside on a sunny day and test the camera's meter against some bright subjects. It's not going to be totally accurate as the sun's intensity can vary. But it could give you a rough idea if your camera's light meter is nearly accurate or totally out. There are also a few smartphone light meter apps that are pretty good. Most will need a little bit of calibration tweaking though. 
Or if you or a friend has a relatively new DSLR, you could set a lit scene up indoors and compare readings. I have three DSLRs with accurate meeting, and I sometimes use this method to see if my camera's metering systems are failing. Set the DSLR to average metering and measure the scene, and use the DSLR to see if your film camera is the same or at least very close. In this scene, I've set my DSLR ISO to 125, the aperture is at 5.6, and I've also put a 50mm lens on it. Average metering is giving me 1 15th of a second. I then tested that against two of my film cameras, one came back at 15th of a second and the other at 30th of a second. When I tested it against the phone app, it was pretty much close, and when I tested the game with my light meter, it was giving me the same reading as the DSLR. The camera that was giving me the reading of a 30th of a second was my Olympus OM20. I've known this for some time, and when I shoot the camera in auto mode, I just increase the exposure compensation by one stop, or I can just tell the camera that I've got a slower speed film inside, just by one stop. You'll soon get to know your film camera after shooting many rolls of film and evaluating your own negatives. It's only from the negatives really that you can decide for yourself if your camera's light meter is working for you or not. There is a ton of exciting films available on the market to shoot, as well as many different developers. If you've just got into shooting film for the first time and developing film yourself, try sticking to the same camera, a reputable solid film and one developer combo to start with and use a ready-mixed liquid developer such as Ilford's DDX as opposed to trying out developer powders which you have to mix yourself. By sticking with one film, one camera and one developer, your confidence and knowledge of shooting film will grow and over time you can start experimenting with other films and other developers knowing that if it goes wrong, it's not you, it's just the process that you've chose. If it's your first time shooting film, stay away from complicated scenes such as brightly lit scenes or hard contrasty scenes and skies. Look for evenly lit scenes such as buildings or subjects lit by natural soft window light, or subjects that are in the shade if it's a sunny day. Brightly lit scenes can give high contrast, especially if it involves the sky or water or shiny cars, leading to punchy looking and hard to control negatives. You want your first film shooting experience to be enjoyable and showing good clean results. You can boost your contrast if needed when you scan your negatives or if you print in the darkroom. Having clean negatives to start out with will give you the confidence going forward shooting film. After your developing process and your film is dry, try not to introduce skin oils onto the film by putting your thumbs and fingers all over it. If you don't have lint free gloves you can handle your negatives by touching the sides. I usually cut my film as it is hanging into strips of six frames starting from the bottom and carefully sliding into the negative sleeves. Your negatives have two sides, the glossy side and the emulsion side. The emulsion side is usually dull looking and the glossy side is, well, it's glossy looking. But be very careful with the emulsion side as it is easy to scratch the emulsion away. And my last tip is don't give up. Although many YouTubers and bloggers seem to shoot film with ease, we all make mistakes from time to time and have made many mistakes from the start. We either meter wrong, develop wrong, choose the wrong film for the job, underexpose, overexpose, and forget to replace fresh batteries in our cameras. Oh, my battery's gone on the camera. I've got to go and get a battery. What a bloody sh It all takes time, but once you get it right and your confidence starts to grow, shooting film can be very rewarding. So my last tip is don't give up. Don't get frustrated if you get poor results. There is a reason for every error and every mistake that we make. And there are many people out there willing to help you get the best from film photography. So those are my top 10 tips for those that are starting out in film photography and most of those derive from the messages and direct messages and emails that I get from uh, new starters from the channel that are asking me questions. Uh, there's many more different uh, tips and different ways of doing things but I think out of all that the most important message is don't give up. You know we've all got our own way of doing things, we've all made mistakes along the way and uh, by not giving up we just continue getting over that and learning new stuff all the time and it is great shooting film it's a lovely medium to shoot and it's very much enjoyable and like i said it is rewarding so uh, out of all that i think the best message i could say is don't give up shooting film just keep trying and keep trying and you will get there eventually so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the video don't forget i've got my uh, sflab beginner's guide to film photography and darkroom printing online so i'll put a link in the description if anyone's interested in that and i'll catch you next time Oh, come get in there, you bugger. Oh, you... I'm trying to...
try that again. Right, this time, right, put it over. Come on, get in there. 